The building and construction industry has a phenomenal waste problem. Half of all the materials sent to landfill in New Zealand and across the world come from this sector. This incredible volume of waste is a consequence of modern building techniques. In our push for quick to build and energy efficient weather type buildings, we have created a sandwich of petrochemically enhanced materials that are designed specifically to never come apart and never break down. And it's not just that buildings produce a lot of waste, they are responsible for some of the most toxic materials sent to landfill. The lovely pink and green timber that you see here, it looks that way because it's treated with boron, copper, chrome and arsenic in concentrations up to 500 times higher than recommended background levels. All this culminates in the fact that only 12% of the materials at the end of a building's life today can be reused without extensive processing. So how can the architect prevent such incredible volumes of toxic waste being produced? How can we design a building so it cannot possibly produce waste at the end of its design life? What does residential housing in New Zealand look like? when it is designed for material reuse. When this issue of waste in the building industry is examined as a consequence of architectural design, we can begin to assess where and how architecture can address the problem. If we unpack the construction process, right from material supply through to end of life and demolition, it is clear that the majority of waste material is produced in this end of life period. And here, the amount of materials that can be salvaged and reused depend almost totally on the decisions made by the architect at the time of design. Material finishes, fixings, formal characteristics and structural configurations all influence the deconstructability of a building. The structural configuration is hugely important in allowing materials to be reused as it often dictates how other materials are specified, fixed and fitted. And there are some very tangible and straightforward steps to reducing waste through the design of a structural system. Simplify fixings. Remove the need for specialist machinery. However, when we attempt to change these elements in a building, there are major economic, aesthetic and legislative barriers to doing so. There are some solutions, however, that the architect can address directly. Designing for mass standardization, modularity and repetition, there is extensive evidence of such practices existing already in the building industry. Historically, the clay brick is the single most commonly reused building material. However, modern construction techniques, including the use of concrete mortars, mean that today bricks are irreversibly damaged when they are removed. There are also a range of modern building techniques that utilise modulation and lend themselves to potential material reuse. Chris Moller's click craft removes the need for a lining to be fixed to the wall directly for bracing. There are a huge range of alternative construction methods that utilise modulation and mass standardisation that could potentially also allow for direct material reuse. Guy Marriage's modular click wall in the bottom left hand corner is representative of a trend in modern construction. Plywood components cut from computer numerically controlled routers allow intricate and highly detailed walls to be constructed. Modulation can also be implemented across a range of scales. In this sequence we have gone from the individual brick right through to whole building modulation. This material reuse problem is fundamentally a pragmatic issue. You cannot understand the limitations of a deconstructible building approach without extensive testing of physical constraints. Here, Guy's click lock wall has been further developed and then built across a range of scales to understand how interlocking plywood components withstand reuse cycles. What comes apart easily, what doesn't, what restricts or prohibits the deconstruction process has all been considered. With each change of scale and material, a different set of construction based issues arise and need to be overcome. This preliminary testing of existing construction ideas helps to highlight a range of very specific constraints that need to be met if material reuse is to be achieved. Again, Many of these issues are deeply pragmatic, driven by material and technical limitations. In response to existing constraints and limitations, a series of walls have been developed. The most successful attributes of the precedents, like the independent layering of structure and linings found in Moller's Clickcraft, are brought forward into the more reusable and scalable geometries found in the iterative tests. The first tests look directly at overcoming dependent layer syndrome 
DLS. The typical wall of today relies on the jib plaster wall being screwed directly to the timber load bearing structure to achieve the necessary bracing requirements. This kissing frame proposal and a series of tests uses two interlocking identical frames to create a self bracing structure to which linings and claddings can be added independently. Alternative ways of overcoming the dependent layers needed in buildings of today includes introducing interlocking cassette modules. A modular straw bale wall with natural sacrificial bracing elements where all waste is replaced with compostable and low energy organic materials is also proposed. Eliminating dependent layers also means integrating cladding and lining solutions that allow for easy deconstruction. And here, the aesthetic implications of reuse through hidden jointing or exposed assemblies is critical to establish a logic of deconstruction and an aesthetic for the architectural design. As mentioned, there are clear and distinct measures of success for evaluating a construction methodology for reuse potential. If we take 10 of the most promising solutions and rank them by the measures of reuse success, then we can truly understand the appropriate material solution. Because this work is grounded within real world constraints, a key aspect of the design process has to look at the economics of each methodology. Conventional light timber framing is conventional for a reason. It is unquestionably the most cost effective solution at about $65 a square meter for a finished area of wall. Less conventional systems get close, but they cannot match the 100 years of research and development and industry readiness of the light timber frame construction. The X-frame solution gets close, but at $103 for a meter of finished wall, it is already 50% more expensive. But thankfully, we are not just measuring by economics. The time taken to erect a construction system is also critical when evaluating potential reuse. Likewise, when deconstruction time is evaluated, the click cassettes and click craft systems are far more efficient. Looking at the number of varied components needed to complete a respective system also helps us to understand the reuse potential. There are numerous other categories that we can use to measure the success of a building methodology designed for reuse. The embodied energy of a system, the material durability during handling and during use, and the end of use impact must all be considered. When the qualitative aspects for each approach are examined, the results suggest two possible outcomes. Either the design of a purely technical solution which relies on highly engineered products and the specification of many different unique components, or the design of a hybrid construction method that mixes both high and low energy materials. Using the interlocking plywood X-frame developed earlier in this research, a section of a dwelling is developed that includes an exterior wall, interior lateral load resistant wall, ceiling and roof. As in previous development tests, the key area of interest is not in the construction of the architecture, but in the deconstruction process. And although the X-frame works effectively to create an open and flexible architecture, an array of components is created that is so vast it compromises the reuse and efficiency potential of the proposed design. Every architectural component of the dwelling has been considered. Internal lining configurations that hook over hidden steel bars to create semi-monolithic internal finishes have been detailed. The subtle modulation of these surfaces is essential in achieving any degree of reuse potential. Reusable waterproof claddings and linings have also been detailed. Modulated folded aluminium panels clip onto a treated barrier plywood surface that is clamped to the X-frame through the use of CNC cut plywood pegs and an integrated reusable rubber seal. The roof structure uses the X-frame system to create a rigid structural diaphragm that is fixed to the walls and ceiling through an engineered truss. Although this solution is structurally sound, it inhibits reuse potential by dictating a geometry that is fixed and non-flexible. These truss components are complex and require the addition of a series of complex individual components to ensure any level of flexibility or reusability. Full-scale prototype testing of the construction method supports this comprehensive exploration of a deconstruction prototype. The CNC plywood pieces are locked together with small plywood pegs and integrated notches. 
full-scale fabrication reveals material durability and tolerance limitations. Swelling of the timber pieces between the time of construction and the time of deconstruction impacts the effort required to separate tension jointed components. The stiffness of these joints increase the likelihood of damaged or broken components during reuse cycles. The end result is a building approach that is very difficult to assemble due to the dependence on a huge number of varied and complex components that are prone to damage. Ultimately this solution would have a limited effect on reducing end of life building waste, as complex components are likely to impede rapid deconstruction and therefore make demolition a more attractive option. However, the X-Frame Technical House is just one option. An alternative solution is to take the most successful attributes of the Technical House and integrate natural, sacrificial, low embodied energy and quickly replenishable materials. This radically reduces complexities and provides a more flexible spatial geometry, effectively making the construction methodology more appropriate to a more diverse set of applications. This organic house utilizes the X-frame structure to establish two parallel modular planes that are endlessly expandable in any direction. Again, every aspect of the building has been considered to create an integrated architectural solution to reduce end-of-life building waste. The roof structure is plywood X-frame clad in recycled rubber plastic shingle that is fixed to the frame using wire hooks. This ensures that no fixing holes are made in the roofing material, enabling future reuse. The 20 degree pitch is determined by the roofing tile and a series of flexible pivoted braces replace the fixed angle roofing truss from previous iterations. The X-frame itself has been iteratively developed to improve structural stability and constructional simplicity. The frame has also been arranged to better accept supplementary systems such as ceiling tiles and flooring finishes. The modular posts use thin laminated veneer lumber lengths to create a hollow form allowing services to be articulated through the building independently of the sacrificial straw walls. Stained compressed cork panelling covers the exposed surfaces of these posts and enables services to be easily accessed for installation, maintenance and end of life removal. The top and bottom plates of these modular posts are bolted directly through the X-frame and can be spaced up to 4.5 meters apart. Additional lateral bracing may be required to achieve earthquake load resistance in New Zealand, however further testing may determine that the rigid post and X-frame connection is sufficient. This modular straw frame structure is an iteration of early tests which explored the relationship between modular timber frame and straw in four walls. Again, further testing is needed to ensure an effective waterproof system is created between the unprocessed and technical materials. The horizontal X-frame planes combined with simple modular posts vastly simplifies the construction process. The reduced complexity is evident in the massing of deconstructed parts, where now the majority of the dwelling is erected from only 12 individual pieces as opposed to the 85 individual components required by the technical house. This quantifiable simplification suggests that the hybrid technical and organic material dwelling can be highly effective in reducing end-of-life building waste. The geometry is non-conditional and highly modular. It uses exposed, durable, easily comprehensible assemblies and allows for mass standardization. The components are easily transportable and the critical building systems are laid in a way that enable deconstruction. The measurable criteria that were established at the outset of this research have been largely met, however some key issues remain. The principal structural material remains a processed and petrochemically enhanced product. It is also highly likely that the plywood components would require further chemical treatment to meet New Zealand's strict timber treatment regulations. Major progress has been made in identifying a building method and architectural style that has the potential to all but eliminate end-of-life building waste. Further research will begin to address the issues outlined in this presentation. Thorough comparative and quantifiable analysis to understand the key benefits and limitations of each respective system will also be carried out.